All right, so what is up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create your very own public API. So as you can see right here, we have some JSON, which was returned by this URL. And just to show you that it's live, when we click on refresh, you'll see that this timestamp will update. So as you can see, that changed to a 64. And I also want to show you that you can add endpoints. So if we go ahead and type in slash request, which is a custom endpoint that I created and add a user as a query, we can just type in code palace and click on enter and it will load a different page which is called request page and the message will now say got the request for code palace and it will give you the most recent timestamp and if we click on refresh the timestamp will continue to update so you can see that it is live and this can work with your android apps or any kind of site but uh, I'll show you how this works. And I also have to specify that we will be using ngrok to create the public URL because we will have to use some tunneling to make our local server public. So make sure you go here and sign up, it's completely free. And when you log in, we will have this page, but we'll come back to this later. So let's create a new Python project. And the first thing we want to do inside here is open up the terminal because we need to pip install flask as the first import. And once we have done that, we can go ahead and call pip install py ngrok. And this will allow us to use ngrok with our terminal in our Python project. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and close the terminal and delete all of this sample text. And the first thing we have to do is import from Flask everything. Then we're going to import JSON and time. Then we have to create the Flask app, which is just going to be Flask and the project name, just like that. And right after that, we can get started with creating our first endpoint. And to do this, we just have to call at app.root. And then inside here, we need to specify what the endpoint will be. So for our homepage, we'll just have it as an empty endpoint, which will be using the get method. So we're just gonna type in methods equal, and then we have to insert get. And this is an annotation that we have to use on a function. So we have to go ahead and create a function, which I will call home page. And to return our text as a JSON, we should create a data set. And it's just going to be a dictionary with all the data that we want to return. So the first thing we want to say is that there is a page and it's going to have the value of home when we call this endpoint. Then we want to say that there is a message and this message is going to be successfully loaded the home page. And finally, let's try to create a timestamp to show you that it is live. So timestamp, and that's going to equal time dot time. And this method will just give us the current time as a timestamp. Under that, we want to create a JSON dump, which will turn this data set into JSON. So we're just gonna say that is equal to JSON dot dumps and it's gonna take the data set. Then we just have to go ahead and return this JSON dump when this endpoint is called. So JSON dump. So every time we call this, it will create this and give us the exact time and it will return it to us as a JSON file. Now let's make something a bit more custom. So we're just gonna copy all of this and paste it right under. And the first thing we're gonna change here is the endpoint, which we want to change to a request, or you can even just change it to user if you want. You can actually add whatever endpoint you want there, just make it readable to yourself. And we should change this page to the request page. So for the second function, we will want the user to be able to input something into the query. And to be able to retrieve that, we have to create a new variable. And we're just gonna call this one user underscore query. And that's going to be equal to the string of the request, which will request an argument. And we want to get the field of user. So essentially the endpoint is now going to be slash user slash question mark user and equals. And then you can type in your username inside here. And this right here is gonna be the query that we will use to get a user. And we can actually save this for later to make it easier to remember just by commenting it out. Then we have to go ahead and edit this data set. So inside here, we're gonna type in request instead of home. And then we're going to write successfully got the request for, and then we need to create a formatted string. So we're gonna add these curly brackets and add an F in front of the string. And inside here, we will insert the user query. Then it's just going to return the JSON dump as earlier, except this time, once the user enters a user in the query, it's going to return a JSON file with that value inside 
the JSON. Then we're just gonna go down and we're gonna call if name is equal to main. Then we want to run our app. And I'm just going to specify a port. If you don't specify a port, I believe it's going to default to 5000, but I like to pick my own port. So I'm just gonna pick 777. And if that doesn't work, it's probably because the port has already been taken. So try 776 or 775. And yeah, that's actually all we need to do for the Python file. So now if we go ahead and run the program, you'll see that we will have a local server that's running. And if we click on that, it's going to open in our browser, the JSON that we've specified. And let's zoom in a bit. So as you can see, we have the home page. It successfully loaded the home page and a timestamp. If we refresh this, the timestamp will update. And also let me show you that the endpoint works. So if we add the slash user question mark user equals username, it will provide a query that allows us to insert this into the JSON. So now the page is on the request page and it says successfully got the request for username, which means you can insert any value you want have it processed in Python and then return it as JSON for your application. But now let me show you how to host this on a public server because right now if you run this, it only works on devices that are connected to your local network. But now let's go to ngrok and when you create a profile, you will have this page. So as you can see right here, we are under setup and installation. And inside here, you'll have something that tells you to unzip and install and then there will be an option to connect your account but we just need to copy this part right here, which is gonna say ngrok auth token and your authentication token. So copy that without the dots or the slash and go to your terminal. Then you just want to paste that in there and it's gonna say downloading ngrok, which might take a minute or two, but I will fast forward to the point that it is done. And once it has finished downloading, you'll see that it will say auth token has been saved to the configuration file and it is somewhere in our configuration files. So the next thing we need to do is copy this line right here, which says ngrok HTTP without the slash and you paste it in there. And then you just need to refer to the correct port number that you're using for this server, which in my case is 7777. And when you click on enter, okay, so I received an error because I was already running another server at the time of this video and the free account allows us only to run one public server at a time. But if you don't have any servers running, you should end up with something like this that tells you that your status is online and it will give you your account name and it will tell you where you can find your public host. So now these URLs down here forward to my local host, which means anyone can use them. And if we click on them, it will work just as the local host. But now you can use this for your web app or your Android app. You can use it for anything you want because it is public and it works exactly the same way as earlier. So let's go ahead and type in slash user slash question mark user equals Federico. And it will load that request. So that's how you can make your API public for free. Of course, you need to worry about running this all the time for it to successfully stay up. But uh, for a free API, I think it's definitely worth it and really cool to have in case you have a test project. And that's actually all I wanted to go over in this video. If you have any questions, just uh, leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. But as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you.